So tell me again about, uh, you have, you've never been in this neighborhood until the other day. Until the other on? day. So the other day, one of my friends, uh, her ankle was broken and I cooked for her. And I brought her some food. So it's just ironic that I'm back here again. And it was in this neighborhood. In this neighborhood. And you had never been in this never neighborhood. Never been in this neighborhood ever before. And, and now twice. Twice. And cooking both times. And cooking both times. That's just crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. It's weird how the world works. It is. Well, we're, welcome to the show. This is Servings Kitchen with a Cause. All we're right. so glad to have you here. Thank you. And introduce yourself. I am Katrina Harley. I'm Community Relations for the Douglas County Task Force on Family Violence and Sexual Assault. That is a long title. That is a long title. Now, is that all on your business card? The whole thing? The whole thing. But a lot of, I know a lot of people, they are familiar with you and they just call you the Douglas County Task Force. Or, or DCTF. Or even, right. Or mm -hmm. just Task Force. You know, they abbreviate. Right. And we'll get into a little bit more about what you do and what you guys do for the community in just a little bit. Okay. But on this show, it's not just an interview with people who are making a difference in our community. We're also cooking. Now, Katrina has no idea what we're cooking. We've got the ingredients cloaked in what we call the beach towel of deception. So all of our, yeah, that's right. <laughs> all of our ingredients are underneath here. Okay. And we're gonna reveal them right now. All right. And you can see if you can guess what we're cooking. Here we go. Boom. Let's see it's here. a lot of ingredients. That is a lot of ingredients. Let's see, we have Fritos and... Those Fritos are made from scratch, too. Made from scratch? Yeah, somebody made them from scratch. Wow. Let's see, we got bell pepper and onion. Looks like we got black beans and we have great northern beans and ground beef and ground turkey. Oh, chili powder. We that got chili. We got chili. We got chili. Yep, yep, we that got gave chili. it away. But it's not just any chili. This is the Douglas County Task Four Bean Chili. Wow. That's right. Okay. We're using the name to come up with the, the uh, dishes that we're cooking. Okay. Now the second dish doesn't really play off the name, but it kind of goes with chili. We're doing a, uh, a cornbread okay. that actually has cream cheese in it. Wow. Yeah, this is gonna blow your mind. It's amazing. So not my grandmama's cornbread. Not your grandmama's cornbread, okay. probably. I don't know if it'll be that good. Okay. I know grandma's got some good cornbread. All right, so we're gonna reset. We're gonna cook our chili and our cornbread, and we're gonna learn all about the Douglas County Task Force mm -hmm. coming up. So we'll reset. Okay. First recipe is the Douglas County Task Four Bean Chili. Task Four Bean Chili. Four Bean Chili. Let's go on family violence and yeah, we will, we'll leave that other stuff off of the okay. recipe now. Okay. So, all right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna brown our meat and we've got about a pound of ground beef and a pound of ground turkey, plus or minus. Not a big deal if you go over or under. And then we're also going to, while that's browning, we're gonna cut up the onion okay. and the bell pepper into small pieces. And then once the, the meat is browned, we'll swap, we'll take the meat out and let the onion and bell pepper go in and, and uh, get those nice and softened and get all caramelized. Seasoned up. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, which one do you want to cut up? Um, I will take the bell pepper. Awesome. All right. So you take the bell pepper. Okay. I'll take the onion, and I'll also okay. get the meat going. Now, Douglas County Task Force on Family Violence and and Sexual Assault. Sexual That's Assault. That's right. All right. I got mm -hmm. it right. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you guys do. Okay, so we assist uh, victims of domestic violence and sexual assault at the task force. Um, we assist with court accompaniment, hospital accompaniment, okay. uh, protection orders, support group. We do it all. So we do it all. You, Advocacy for You're victims. dealing with some heavy stuff. It is. All Very right. heavy stuff. And, and I would imagine that you can't really plan what your day is going to be like. Never. It could be just crazy. Never. But hopefully it's quiet. Sometimes, sometimes. Sometimes. No. So how long have you been with the Douglas County Task Force? Well, about four years now. I started out as a volunteer 
and then I came on board full time last year. Okay. So, about and, four years. And you're community relations. I am community relations. You're in charge of getting the word out. Getting the word out. And uh, so, you said you have volunteers. We do. What do the volunteers do? Well, our volunteers man our 24-7 crisis line. Uh -huh. um, a lot of times we do have uh, things, of course, that hope happen overnight. And so uh, our volunteers sometimes help victims to safety plan. If necessary, they have a, a list of resources available to assist where needed. Okay. Now, you, you, you're saying that, that these emergencies don't always happen between 9 and 5? No. Monday through Friday? Absolutely not. Sometimes uh -huh. they have to respond to the hospital in the case of a sexual assault. Uh huh. And so advocacy just never ends 24 7. I'm going to lean over you there to throw away some All of my right. trash. So, you guys, I would imagine you guys work. Uh, pretty closely with the court system. We do. We work very closely with the court system. What is a, now this is probably not a typical uh, situation for you guys, but give us an example of, of kind of the process of what would happen if somebody called you and said, you know, I'm a victim of, of X, Y, or Z. What, what happens after that? Well, the very first thing that we do at the task force is we find out exactly what the victim wants. So okay. you have to, in advocacy, take a victim-centered approach uh -huh. because not everybody that comes in wants a protection order. Uh -huh. uh, sometimes they, what um, they may need is support group. And so if that's what they need, then uh, we assist them with that. Okay. So it's a, it's a victim-centered approach. And if they are in a situation that is not safe, what happens then? Well, uh, we find out exactly what's going on uh -huh. because it may need to be um, maybe a situation where they may actually need to call 911. Uh -huh. uh, but if it's a situation where they need housing, then we assist with that uh, with helping them to find safe housing. Okay. And uh, you have resources for things like that? Absolutely. How typical is that? Um, it depends and it varies. Um, sometimes, like I said, you just never know because every day is different. Right. So you never know from day to day whether or not a victim needs housing, whether or not a victim needs you to accompany them to bond hearing. You just never know. Well, unfortunately, we need organizations like the Douglas County Task Force. Absolutely. But fortunately, there are people who are willing to stand up and, and work and volunteer to do those types of things. And I, I would imagine it's a pretty stressful job. It can be. Um, so one of the things that we talk about a lot in our volunteer meetings is self-care. Uh -huh. um, so whatever a, a volunteer needs or even staff needs to just be able to deal with what we deal with at the task force, Right. You know, you need to tap into those things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I must say, you have done an amazing job on that bell pepper. Well, thank you. It's good to have a fellow cook in the kitchen with me. Oh, yeah, I cook. Sometimes, I cook. you know, people aren't, aren't as good at, at chopping. Steve Hort, Boys and Girls Club. <clears throat> so, it's good to have some professional help over here. I know it. Now the ground beef and ground turkey is almost browned. All right. And uh, so I'm gonna grab a bowl to transfer this into. Now a little health tip for those of you out there. If you don't want all the grease, you can strain it out. Or what I'm gonna do is use a slotted spoon. Kinda leave the grease in the pot. And then I'll dump it out. And feel free to just flush it down the sink. It's fine. WSA won't care. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. All right, so I got all the, the meat out of there. All right. It's looking good. Looks good. Leave that there. Our oil is going like crazy, so I'm going <clears> to 
get something to pour it into. This is my uh, oil collection bowl. Try not to use a plastic bowl for this. It's not a good idea. And don't leave this on your counter for too long. It starts stinking. It gets nasty. All right, so now we're ready for our onions and peppers. All right. So I'll pour my onions in if you want to take care of the peppers. All right. There we go. Looking good. Looking good. So we'll just keep stirring these up until they get soft. We'll put our meat back in. And then we'll open up the cans, right. pour them in there, and we'll be, we'll be ready to go. All right, so our peppers and onion are ready, and you are hard at work opening cans. Hard at work. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough. Tough. I'm going to pour the meat back in. We're gonna have a whole lots of chili. Ooh, this is rough. Mm -mm. Yeah, it's not the best can opener in the world. So we've got red beans, and we're gonna add all the juice. I'm a uh, proponent of adding the all the juice because I want there to be as much seasoned liquid in there as possible. Yeah, that one's not working so this well. This one's not working. This going. That's the yeah. corn. Let's you see. know, I had to use like all my strength with that. Oh, all up. See? You got it started. So we'll get that corn in there. Eventually, there we go. All right. Yeah. Let's get them beans. Show the, the, the people at home what kind of beans we're doing. So this one is the uh, black beans. Now, we're just adding the beans that I picked up okay. at the store. You can do any kind of beans that you want to do. You don't have to have four beans, you can do as many as you want, but of course, with the task four beans, it just worked. Four beans is what we went with. And then we've got regular chili beans. Regular, gotta have the regular chili beans. Got to. In Texas, this would not be accepted. They do not put beans in their chili. Really? Yes. They do not want any beans. There we go. And then we've got the great northern beans. Not just northern beans. Great. They're great. Great. Well, that color. Got oh, the that's pretty. nice colors going on there. And now the last cans. We got two big cans of tomatoes. And with any luck, I'll be able to open these. These are crushed, I believe. Diced. 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 So crushed, diced, whatever you want to do. You may want to uh, cut them up if you get whole tomatoes. Second can of diced tomatoes. Full pot there. Boom. Before I put the seasoning in, I'm just gonna stir these around a little bit. Get it nice and incorporated. Yeah, it's definitely full. However, once we let this simmer, a lot of the liquids will work their way out and everything mm -hmm. will kinda settle down in the bottom. And when I do chili, I don't know about you, but I like to cook a lot and take about half of it and freeze it. Mm -hmm. It's always better the next day too. Oh yes. Always better. Definitely. All right, so that's close Looks enough good. there. Looks good, looks good. 
Now we'll put in some seasoning. And I did get two packets since we're kind of doing a double portion here. You want to pour that one in. Get all this incorporated, reduce the heat to simmer, probably throw it back here on the oven to get it out of our way, and then we're gonna start the cornbread. The cornbread. The cream cheese cornbread. Cream cheese cornbread. The chili is simmering in the background. It is. It's looking delish. It is. All right, we got the oven preheated to about 500 degrees. Hot. Because we want to cook this cornbread really, really hot. Right. The idea is when we put the batter in, we want it to really fry and sizzle and just get that nice crust on the outside and cook the inside perfectly. So have a little bit of crunch when we bite into it. All right. So while we were uh, waiting for the, the oven to heat up, we put in one cup of cornmeal, one cup of flour, and about a tablespoon of baking soda. Then over here, we have a semi-softened stick of butter, two eggs, a cup of buttermilk, and a cup of water. Okay. okay. Now this will go into here, and you had some good technique going on, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you all right. I'm gonna let you do that. So we'll pour the wet into the, the dry. And what we'll do is use this lovely piece of equipment here to incorporate the wet ingredients into the dry. We don't really wanna mix it really, really heavy and get all the bubbles out. We want it to be, you know, a little bit clumpy. You don't have, have to get it smooth. So we'll just let the, the uh, wet ingredients incorporate into the dry. So you guys have volunteers. We have volunteers. Uh, you also rely on grants for funding. We do. So you, you require a lot of outside support. We do. Now, you talked to me about a fundraiser that you guys are planning on doing. What What is that all about? Yes, we are planning a softball fundraiser where there will be softball teams. Okay. So the community should just look out for that announcement coming soon. Awesome. And if people want to support in other ways, what other opportunities do they have? Well, we are on Amazon Smile. Okay. We also uh, take part in Kroger Community Rewards. So if, if folks want to help out, they can select the, the uh, Douglas County Task Force on Amazon or select us as their Kroger Community Rewards partner. And then every time they spend money at those places, every they, time they you spend guys money. get money. Right. And what do you use that money for? Uh, we, uh, we use that money uh, to assist our victims. Uh, a lot of times when you have uh, a sexual assault, for instance, the victim's clothing may be taken as evidence. Oh, uh, okay. And so we have to make sure that we provide people with clothing when okay. they leave. Yeah, mm -hmm. I didn't even think about that. Yep. So if you want to help out, you can do these things that we're talking about and you can be a hero as well. Now, we've got the cornbread batter ready. We've got it ready. Preheated oven, we've got the cast iron in there heating uh, up absolutely. with the oil. So we're about ready to put the batter in. So what we're gonna do is pour this in. I add the cream cheese in there. I'm gonna put the cream cheese in after we do the batter. Got that nice oh, wow. frying yeah. going on. Cast iron is the way to go. Oh yeah. That looks good. Mm-hmm. Smells good already. This is real healthy too, you can tell by that oil. Oh, absolutely. And the cream cheese we're about to put in. All right, so here's where you can be really uh, creative. Okay. All right, we're using cream cheese, just little dollops like this. 
You can also, before you scoop the cream cheese out, you can mix it with maybe some Tabasco sauce or uh, we've, we've actually done a show where someone did this at their restaurant and they used pimento cheese instead. Oh, awesome. So just some uh, unique options. So we're gonna make sure we get enough dollops in here so that we can get some cream cheese in every slice. All right, that looks awesome. Woo! Shake it just a little bit, get nice and worked in there. And here we go. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. So we're gonna cook that until it is golden brown. Golden brown. And we're gonna pull that out, slice it up, get us a bowl of chili, and we're good to go. Good to go. All right. We are on the home stretch. All right. The cornbread is just about to come out, and we checked on it. It looks amazing. It looks amazing. The, it's. It is. I, I almost pulled it out early. I don't know. Anyway, so we've got the chili simmering in the background. We're ready to eat. So I'm going in I'm for hungry. the cornbread. Looks like we got 30 seconds left, but I'm going to take it out early. I can't wait that long. Oh my Oh yeah, goodness. that looks amazing. Whew. That is awesome. That cream cheese in there, that's not even gonna need any butter. So while we're waiting on that to cool just a little bit, I'm gonna prepare our chili. Okay. And of course you can't have chili these days without Fritos and cheese and uh, sour cream. So we've got those. There you go. Mmm, yes ma'am. Uh oh. That's, hey, you're not doing anything wrong. A little dollop? Yes ma'am. I like anything dairy. You can't go wrong with Fritos. Can't go wrong with Fritos. There we go. Do you want some? Sure. We'll mix that up. Gonna be hot. Yeah, look at that smoke coming off. All right, take a little bite. We'll be able to taste the seasoning, make sure it's right. That's good. Boom. That's good. I like it. High five. Success on the chili. Now we're gonna find out about the cornbread. See how we did. It's nice and crumbly. Oh yes, it's like cake. For well, you. Well, thank you. This is a meal in itself right here. It is. Or dessert. Let me do a little bit better job of cutting that. So I'm gonna use my spoon to dig into yeah. this. I'm gonna need it. All right. Make sure I get some of that cream cheese. Absolutely. I bet that's gonna be hot too. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Look at that steam. Man, I just love cream cheese. That's good stuff. Woo! That's seriously like cake. So we have a successful meal here. It's raining today, so this is a perfect meal. It Comfort is. Comfort food, nice and warm. 
I want to thank you so much for being on the show today for the Douglas County Task Force. And if people want to learn more about you or volunteer, who do they need to contact? Well, they can call 678-715-1196 and just ask for Katrina. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And we'll see you next time on Servings Kitchen with a Cause. Thank you.